Welcome, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day. We have the remote setup. That's a global conference. So uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here tonight. We are at the last community talk, but not least. I have a pleasure to announce Kamil Shiko from Transition Technologies Science. And Kamil, without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh... I'm quite happy this time to be the last person uh, because the question I'm trying to ask fits to be answered the last. Uh, because you know, when you have a conference, it's good to wrap it up in some way. And I guess the, you know, it, it, the best thing to do then is to answer the question of the topic you have for the conference. And this particular case, that would be the question which is posed in the name of the conference because the conference is named YR. And I will try to kind of cope with that question here today. So answer the question, why to use R? It's because, you know, also while being on the previous editions of AR, I heard this question asked a lot. So it's almost like a thing that will come on every R meetup. And at the same time, uh, it's not the same case with the Python. So I don't hear the same kind of question on the Python meetups. Why Python? No, it's not the case. So my you know, inner psychologist at some point decided to ask the question, why is that? Why I hear this question among R people and not Python people? That's interesting. Uh, so this is something I will try to cope with today. And also uh, you know, with the question about why the question is asked, but also is there an answer for this question? So that's, that's the plan for today. So let's, ha let's, let's have a closer look. And uh, you know, it's a no brainer to go to the web pages and to compare the languages based on the, what, what the organizations behind them say. And if you go to the Python web page and read the first sentence about the Python, you will learn that the Python is a programming language that lets you work quickly and integrate systems more effectively, which, is, which sounds promising. So that's, a, that's encouraging. While if you go to the R web page, um, you read in the first sentence, that R is a free software environment for statistical computing and graphics, which is maybe, you know, if you're looking for a, to choose a programming language, then this description isn't very encouraging, but it also points you to some specific domains where probably uh, the, the tool and the, the language itself fits, fits best. So, so far, I guess it's, it's, uh, it's not answered yet, I guess. So let, let's go deeper and maybe let's see the Python first in, in opposition to, to the R. Uh, so Python has uh, some amazing qualities which are emphasized over and over again. I'm sure that everybody uh, heard them at some point. So it has uh, a very nice syntax uh, which allows programmers to write effectively. So probably compared to say Java, you, you can be more efficient to produce solutions faster with Python. It has amazing standard library where you can use a lot of the tools already built in, which allow you to interact with the data, which is not necessarily a CSV. So you can read from the serial ports, uh, from web sockets and whatnot. So a lot of the good stuff that you would expect to be in a programming language. And also has a lot of amazing frameworks for web development, for example. You, you probably heard about Django or for scraping or for machine learning, lots of, lots of applications where Python excels and is proven to be working perfectly in production environment. And last, but maybe not the least, or especially compared to R, Python has a great license, which allows for commercial distribution of your work which is not that obvious with R because it has a GPL3 license. So you have to be careful. You have to be careful what you're doing. Um, right, so that's, that's maybe uh, not very promising, but I won't give up right now <laughs> uh, because uh, I come from a place where we have experiences that let, let us answer this question of why R in an, in an interest, interesting way. So basically, I come from a company which is called Transition Technology Science, uh, which is a spin-off from R&D division, which means that you know, things are different uh, from the rest of the company, which is a software house. Basically, you are getting a lot of the projects which are difficult, that don't necessarily have a solution. Nobody solved them yet, which basically means uh, in different worlds, words that uh, you have a bunch of hackers in the team. The team is not large, but it's very diverse and it's, very, it's a team of very talented people. 
Uh, so, so my colleagues are actually proficient in multiple languages. We have people who like R, Python, Julia, even C. And uh, af, you know, in, in parallel to this diversity comes the diverse suite of projects. I won't go into details, but we have uh, a lot of serious projects uh, in our portfolio that were written in a mixture of languages. So for example, we have an AI that controls power plants in modern power plants uh, over the world, and it's written in Python. On the other hand, we have a multi-omic analysis uh, of the data for epilepsy biomarkers, which was done in R. Uh, but also we have a project like the optimization of the Warsaw heating networks, where each night we have to solve an equation with more than 16,000 parameters. And this was written with the four languages, so R, Python, Julia, and C++. Uh, yep. So. Basically, we, we, I guess we are well informed to, to give you the answer for YR. And actually those, those, uh, those projects I mentioned are not the one I would like to focus on most because there was a one special, which is, I guess, the best example of uh, what R can do. And uh, best example of what R can do on the Python ground. So on the ground of the programming languages. So it all started and I'm showing you the graphics from the Disney cartoon, Vajana, uh, where the princess is at some point, uh, you know, getting in the boat and just going to the for the horizon, wondering how far it goes. Uh, and basically this is what we've done in the project. So we, I once had a, I, I had a personal opportunity to, to be a part of the projects where it all started as a hackathon which proved to be very successful, written in R. And then the journey started and we started to build on that and build on that. So uh, let's see what was the result. So what, what happens when you try to use R in production? So the first thing that happened is that we've proven to ourselves and to others that R can do the job and provide business value. That's not very difficult. At this point, we're talking about the script. Uh, the second challenge that we need to solve was to code properly. So I mean, to structure the code into functions, get away from the scripts, work with a team of people, not just a single developer. Uh, actually, there was a team of more than six developers use Git along the way, uh, then provide a testing framework, uh, use Jenkins to test the code before every developer uh, puts it to the Git and use, for example, GitLab Actions to run linter automatically to provide the best possible quality of the code. Or, for example, to use logging for easier debugging because you stop using your code on your own machine and you deploy it somewhere else and some other people use it, so you, you want to have logs. All this, up to this point, perfectly doable with R. Then the second thing we were asked to do was to provide the uh, GUI, and we succeeded with Shiny, so that's also so far so good. Then there was, a, uh, there was a challenge to save the results of this activity to the database. And we tried multiple along the way and uh, you know, provide nice dashboards for the business. Also, you know, so far so good, R is very strong in those, in those domains. At this point, it's probably somewhere about a year and a half into the project, we realized that we developed actually a business critical system, meaning that you know, we are maintaining a code base which is used every day by the business and if it breaks then the process breaks so they the, the business cannot work without it so that's huge and up to this point perfectly doable with R. then there was a there was an ask to detach and uh, stop developing front end in shiny uh, and make space for example to to react and instead become a set of APIs which would interact and provide the business logic, the business value. That also was perfectly possible with Plumber. And uh, one of the latest developments was, uh, oh, sorry, not yet, because uh, in the meantime, we also were asked to make the code speedier and refactor it. And using the tools that R has uh, for refactoring, we've, we've been able to, to achieve impressive uh, gains in performance. So that's also perfectly doable with R. And one of the latest developments was to move the database to the AWS cloud and use the, one of the offerings, which is called DocumentDB. And uh, here actually is the place where the challenges uh, started to arise because you notice that, for example, if you want to log things, then you have a packages for that, but they are kind of light compared to the Python logging package. 
Or for example, and I, I think this might be a deal breaker for the project, is that if you would like to use the cloud offerings, then you have also a kind of light experience compared to Python, which you can see by yourself on the, on the images I provide where uh, for some facilities, like for example, connecting to the database, to the document DB, there are uh, AWS provided examples for R. And unfortunately, when you get into the more advanced features, like for example, you would like to use transactions with the database, then R is suddenly gone. And I'm afraid at this point, to my understanding, transactions are not possible with R and AWS document DB. So the bottom line is that we achieved a lot. And ironically, compared to Python, you need to be a better hacker to do things with R. So you, you probably most of the times can get the same result, but you need to work more if you, if you know, if you compare the programming languages. So why R then? Why, why is that? Because so far I told you that things are possible, but not the smoothest experience in all cases. So there are unique advantages that R has, which, which are over and over again proven to be statistics, for example, and especially the statistics, which is used in um, fields like the clinical trial data, that data analysis. And I link here uh, a great write-up where the author, who is a professional analyst for clinical trials, gives you the methods which are missing in Python and you can simply do, can do the work there. So this is a great advantage. The second is when you get out of the statistics, you still have a great code base for advanced analytics. And for example, the, the picture I give you on the right, uh, right hand side uh, is an excerpt from the package I love, which is, which is a package for permutation distribution clustering by Andreas Marcus Brandmeier. And this package let me successfully completed multiple projects. And this is simply not available in, in Python. I'm not sure why, uh, but it's not there. And this was a PhD, which was implemented straight into the R. And you have opportunities like that in multiple, multiple places. So there are some unique methods which are just in R and not always in other languages. And I guess Bioconductor is probably the repository for many, many uh, packages like that. And uh, third and last, but maybe not the least, and it's also interesting that, uh, that R is uh, one of the features I, I like about it is that it's easier to pick up and use as a tool and not a programming language. So if you like to give up a nice analytical tool for a person, then it's quite challenging with Python because you need to download the language, you know, the interpreter and then, uh, you know, think about the things like virtual environments, condas and what's not. Uh, while in, uh, in R, you can just download the R itself, maybe possibly the R Studio, and you're ready to go. And using the excellent R documentation, you are probably capable of delivering nice, uh, nice results. So, which is, I guess, the, the, the curve is steeper here uh, for Python. So those are really nice, uh, unique advantages of R, but that's not all because I gave you some of the examples of what we do at the TTSI. And I have to say to you that this question, why R, it's not the question we ask ourselves frequently. Because first of all, the lesson learned from our project is that the people are usually much more important than the languages they code in. So if you, if you, if you have a talented person, then it's really a secondary question, what this, this, this person, uh, what is the language this person codes in? Uh, especially since you can nowadays easily mix languages within the project. So you can uh, use the microservices, you can wrap your things in APIs and communicate with other pieces. And then, you know, the, 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 the case of what language is it in is, a, is, a, is of a secondary concern. Uh, the third thing I wanted to mention is that many of our projects, uh, it is true what they say that the, the, you know, exploratory data analysis and data wrangling is often 80% of the job. Sometimes it's 100% of the job. And in projects like that, really, you know, the, the unique advantages of R make it uh, shine and it's just pure joy to use. Uh, the last thing, and I, I guess really important, is that those languages we are talking about today tend to, I guess, converge over time and learn from one another. One of the examples is that, you know, in Python, you got much better plots over time, which were, you know, usually the domain the R was, was uh, specialized in. 
While on the other hand, in R, we got much more tools, tooling for web, web apps, Shiny, APIs, Plumber, and so on and so on. So what's the, what's the bottom line? So what if I know R, should I ask the question why R? Should I, should I care for that answer? So the first thing I wanted to tell you is great that you know R. That's, that's a very nice quality and nice uh, skill to have. So you really don't need to worry about anything. Uh, R is not an inferior version of Python. In, in some fields, it definitely is inferior, I guess, but it has its unique qualities and superpowers. And this is the important part. Because you know, if, if the overlap would be 100%, it, it would be worse in this, those overlapping parts. That would be, uh, that would be um, very bad for R, but it's, it's, uh, it's not like they overlap in 100%. There is this field where R excels. And domain specificity is not a bad thing. This can be really beneficial. So if you work in a field that are better handled uh, with R, then you know, you're the winner. You don't have to care for other solutions. If, you're, if it works great for you, that's, that's absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, and uh, so I guess uh, if I can let you out of here with just one thought, then you know, enjoy R. And if you're building data science products, then just be aware of R's limitations. There are some and choose the right tool for the right job. I guess that's the recipe for a successful project. Thank you. Okay, Camille, thank you for the time uh, you invested to prepare the talk. And yeah, let's now just move to the closing ceremony. Thank you for joining.